Hey, you're listening to Stock Smart on the iBet Networks here with Jeffrey Camus and special guest Joe Waterman. How are you doing, Joe? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. So market's interesting today. This is uh, December 7th. We're doing the show. Market's really rebounding from what I'm seeing. A move like this, you know, having watched this now every day for the last three or four years, this is a short squeeze of, of a lot of little names. Like there's a lot of names. So I look at a stock like a great earning stock today was MongoDB. Now, MongoDB, you know, this stock has done really well in the past. It's in the 500 range. But for it to make an $80 move today, which is is something like a 17% move to 502, that's a short squeeze to me. And this stock had been heavily shorted because it had made a big move. It was like a tech god, uh, one of these really high, high flyer stocks. You know, it's essentially a database service that went for open source data usage going after like the Oracle the Oracle area, which Oracle held such a high amount of business in for so long, but then MonoDB came in, and they're, this is a growing company, but a 17% move on earnings doesn't seem right. I don't know what you're seeing on your end, but we can also talk about one we've talked about on the show before, Joe Ambarella. That's also having yeah. a huge move today, and to me, that's a short, and you actually had a short position in that stock at one point. Yeah, I, did. I, I had a short. I had to hold it. I took some pain, but then it came back by the end of the day, so I was able to get it back in for a small profit. And that thing retested down to about 196 at one point. I don't know where you, what you held onto at one point, but so we got so we got a kind of a clearing here in the Omicron. I think everyone mispronounces that. I don't know if anyone is saying it correctly, but we got kind of right. a clearing in the Omicron. There were some positive things. You know, we're getting the move back towards interest rates going up. So that's more, you know, uh, not fearing, you know, or or thinking that there's more strength in the economy. What are you seeing in awesome calls? Anything interesting that you're looking at in awesome calls today? Well, you know, funny because, uh, you know, we're looking for ranges, right? So MongoDB was something that uh, there was calls out on, right? So the call this morning on MongoDB was if it crosses 525, look for a 5 to 10 point pop. And if it... Uh, crosses 514 or if it snaps 514 look for a 15 to 20 point sell off right and so i'm looking to long mongodb if it crosses 508 again uh but otherwise i don't care right now because it's trading like 501 502 but the interesting thing about what you said about the mongodb that i would challenge is city which and this is all stuff i'm learning you know i didn't know any of this necessarily before but city is uh a tier one analyst and they've got a 660 price target out right so so that to me like is why i would want to long it again if it crosses 508 but do you feel like a move today like so we saw a member in amarella when amarella had huge earnings came through really strong you actually went you saw the move the move was i don't know I, it, that had been an oversold stock and a lot of these nasdaq uh, stocks have gotten shaved a little bit and i'm wondering you know i think again we talk so much about timing what's your timing on a move like that because if you get in it now you know you might get kind of a correction if we did get right. some short covering you're going to get a short-term correction not to say this isn't a good long i like that company because honestly this is a this is a company that's a pain in the ass to oracle which used to be you know the 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 company but all these new developers want to work in mongodb and so what's happening is these newer projects are all going in mongodb and I, people who don't really understand technology there's an entrenchment with software and so if you're in mongodb you're probably going to be in it for 10 years or or longer cuz you, people you don't want to develop an, into a new software that's some kind of enterprise level scale and so mongodb when they're getting these new developers using the software they're going to be around for a long time what was the story that you think is driving MongoDB higher? Did you see it? Or oh, just, I think it's I, it's AWS. I think it's I, I saw something where it was going to be picked up in the AWS. And I think what when, when you see and I'm talking about holding this for a day and trying to get 10 or 15 points, you know, but uh, when, when technology is adopted by Amazon, like that's the gold, like that's it. That's the gold standard, right? Right. But this is coming in. This is off earnings. So they had their, yeah, their, yeah, yeah. their revenue increased 50% year over year. Now that's, that's phenomenal, right? I mean, who's doing that? So when you're, you know, that's real growth that people are going to invest in. So I'm not, I'm not saying it's not a great long either. I'm just saying again, right. with all these stock things is what's your position, what's your time in getting in something like this. So if we look at it, let's take a look at MongoDB from a couple of the perspectives that I like to look at, which are like the oscillators. So if I'm going to look at like the chart on MongoDB, 
you know, it did kind of it it did kind of go and recorrect like a lot of these stocks. It had a correction right about 430. You know, recently it looked like it, that's where support hit 422. That's long term support for this stock if you look at a year because it was there okay. in last February. And then when you look at it now, so if you take a look at the oscillators on this, it's kind of interesting to see what where we're at here. This thing got almost oversold. So it was dipping into the 30 range on oversold. And now you can see the bounce. And I would tell people again, this is my favorite indicator. And Joe, I know Joe, I don't know if you believe in it yet, Joe, but but what I'm saying <laughs> is, so actually, so the good news is for investors, if you wanna be long in this, there's room right now. Okay. Like I don't think it has to correct right now because this thing has gotten heavily overbought before into the 80 range. And right now it's really only neutral in RSI. So there's still probably buying opportunity even with what happened today on this. Did you see what was the RSI? Did you say 30 or did you say? Well, it had hit uh, when it rec when it corrected, just I would say it corrected sort of, you know, December. It's really the, the correction really was like the third. It was the last day we saw it down to 430, right? So it had the big move today. But through that correction, it hit almost down to 30 on RSI. Well, that was the Omicron, is, right? Like everybody was throwing out everything. Partially and the growth, you know, it's it, it's one of those stocks too that gets hit by inflation rate uh, concerns and then interest rates rising. So, you know, any of these high growth where you're paying out 10, 15, 20 years for EPS, you know, where there's still negative EPS, those are scary companies, right? So this company is still negative 4.74 EPS. So any of those growth stocks or the high, you know, you know, the high, high growth stocks with no real earnings yet, you know, positive cash flow is still a more dangerous stock when you have interest rate concerns. And I think that that's interesting to highlight just because we could have a spectrum of listeners, right? So I think because we're present valuing those earnings to today, right? So when they're saying they're going to make a lot of money, like two and three years out with interest rates going up, when we present value that, that's going to make it not seem as much as, as we first expected. That's right. right? They're, going to be they're going to be deprecated, I would say, or they're less valuable, sort of just like fixed income against interest rates going up. And out. then so what we might, we might see, right, then so I think if, if you would start to feel like that's happening with the tech sector, right, we're going to see a sell-off more in tech and uh, rotation into like a value, right, because they're not going to be as affected. Well, yeah, and we saw that last year. We're like at the beginning of the year. We saw the rise in interest rates, and we saw things like the 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 S and P. You know, the value. So, like when we talk about the S and P five hundred, we talk about ten stocks that make up like thirty five percent, and then you Seth, have yep. four hundred and ninety stocks that essentially make up the seven percent. I mean, the the seventy percent, and the seventy percent of those stocks actually trade in value ranges. They trade somewhere with price to earnings around sixteen to eighteen. So when you have most of the stocks, all the other high growth stocks that make the S&P 500 27, those are things like Amazon, Facebook, Apple, Microsoft. So those okay. companies and Tesla. And so those companies really whack out proportion, the actual value to the S&P 500. It's almost like I'm telling you, there should be another product really to discern which is which, because I, I think people don't realize how much tech they're actually invested in when they're in the S&P 500. And there are a lot of different products. You have the low volatility, you have the equal weighted rather than the market cap weighted SPY. So those are- Well, and you know, the, the interesting thing about that is because I, and we might have mentioned this on an earlier uh, episode, but I think in 2007, the Dow had the opportunity to put Apple in the index and it chose uh, bank because it went heavy in the banks Right. And if they would have put Apple in the index in 2007, like we would have never had a recession in 2008 because the Dow would have been screaming higher. Right. You know? And that would have that would have stabilized the index. But but they were bank heavy. Right. They had a lot of banks and the Dow Jones at the time. And in 2008, the epicenter of, you know, was mortgage backed securities and all the banks got smoked. So we went in. You know, it's kind of interesting thing in history, I think, in the 2007 with Apple not going in the Dow. Well, I think what, going what's in. kind of funny, too, about these indexes is that we're like we're so I, I don't know if it's we're stuck in our ways is maybe the, the easiest way to say. But, you know, I don't think pros really look at the Dow as much as they look at the S&P. And if they look at the S&P, you're just looking at the triple Q's. And I think really what you want to look at is some kind of more equal weight index so you can really see what the value is in there. Because when you start right. looking at those indexes, you know, those are coming up. Like when you see big moves now in the S&P 500, it could just be all from Tesla. Yeah. Well, and, you know, honestly, that's what we're trading. I'm, tra I'm learning how to trade Tesla versus Spider. 
and NVIDIA versus the Q. By the way, and if, it's that simple. Are you watching? So I know we talked, and I talked about the positive correlation to the S&P 500 and Bitcoin. You're probably seeing that now. I don't know if you're watching it, but I can check my Bitcoin and how it's trading at, say, say you know, I'm, I have a bad sleepless night, which seems like almost every night. So I'm up at three in the morning here. And I'm checking my Bitcoin. If my Bitcoin's down, I know almost that the futures are going to be down in the market. Okay. And and yeah, you know, that's true. I, I think I, I I learned something interesting about Bitcoin this week that I didn't know. And I'm not a Bitcoin like enthusiast by any means. Right? I have a little bit. I told I think I told listeners I have about ten thousand in Bitcoin in a combination of Ethereum and Bitcoin. So I have I think I have one entire Ethereum, and I think I have whatever fractional two two tenths of a bitcoin or something like that or one one that's good one. or ten I, actually that would be like 10 i don't know so maybe it's 10 percent of a bitcoin well i just got out from under an irs audit so i'm not touching bitcoin no you're because, actually uh, you bring you brought that up joe actually you brought that up about yeah. you 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 believe you got from uh you got that from coinbase which it doesn't I surprise do. me yeah, no. So, so an interesting thing that I found out about this Bitcoin is it trades more actively after hours than during the day. Do you know why? I, that's a great. I know. I, you know, if we had the if we had a question ready and we had that as a question, we'd load this stock one. Right? No, we'd load this. The average investor. So, Joe, can you tell me, <laughs> Jeffrey, why Bitcoin is more actively traded after the market closes or later in the day? Right. So, and this is obvious. It's not difficult to understand, right? But who's trading Bitcoin? Uh, people like regular people. Right. Or, or, you know, and so when the market closes, they still want to trade. So where do they go to make a trade? Are you saying really active traders or what do you, what are you saying? Who's trading? Well, like the, so, I'm saying like the, the young people have been trading this, you know, the people that are learning, the people that are like, you know, the internet, uh, the Reddit Raiders and, you know, the, the gamblers, like the ones that the day traders, the, like a lot of people call them the gamblers. Right. So when the market, <laughs> when the, when the market closes, they don't have, can we have a more respectful term for these people? Well, yeah, no, I'm just telling you what, like, you, you know, it, it's not what I feel. It's just like, that's how, uh, sometimes they're summed up in, uh, in news stories or, you know, on CNBC and stuff like that. They're not respected. But like when the market closes, they don't want to leave the casino, right? So they go and trade what's open, which is Bitcoin, right? Yeah, they're and trading. The, they're trading in their pajamas and they're trading as they're out to dinner with their wives so and the their girlfriends. <laughs> yeah, so the market competes for it, right? So when the market's open, they can trade other stocks, and when the market closes, they can go to trade Bitcoin, which isn't like it's not like rocket science. But Those, now, now, listen to this. Now look at Coinbase, and this is what I learned. Right. And this is what I learned in the chat room. Right. Was that uh, Bitcoin down coin coin will be down. Right. No, that's right. That's it's always they're correlated. They are so positively correlated. I agree. You could right. actually I've never done it, but I bet I've seen that stock and I watched it. But the problem with Coinbase really is this. It's, it's simple. Like that is not a good investment. I've talked about it on the show prior, but, you know, ticker symbol COIN trading on the Nasdaq. It had this again. This to me is a short cover. So this thing's up 9%. Why? This is not a good investment because Coinbase, although there's, it's handling a lot of trading, don't you think if, if uh, JP Morgan or Schwab wants to handle co this Bitcoin, they could do it in like five seconds? Yeah. I mean, well, so, so I think, why, why, I think wouldn't you, why wouldn't you want to have, why wouldn't I want to have my coin account at rather than Robinhood or Coinbase or Kraken or these other crazy, <laughs> these other, these other right. crypto places. Why wouldn't I just want to have it at, at Schwab or JP Morgan or Merrill Lynch or Morgan Stanley or one of those huge, one of the huge wirehouses to me, I would, I know that if people who want to dip a toe in that and they were, and they wanted to dip it, they'd feel a lot more comfortable dipping it with those big companies. Yeah. And that's just the adoption rate is going to pick up to that, you know, as, as, as more and more people adopt it, then it'll be in the, the big institutions, you know. But I think what I the next phase of what I was saying there. So if Bitcoin's down overnight, then an obvious coin could be down. Right. But we had an interesting scenario on Monday and on Monday, the Nasdaq was down. Right. And, and I the, had uh, and I think I had and I watched my Bitcoin a little bit. I lost I want to say I lost 12 percent on both the combination of Bitcoin and Ethereum, my 10,000 went to like 8,900. So I think I lost about 12% on like in between Sunday and Monday before the market opened, you know, the trading market, stock market. 
Well, the, the interesting thing about coin was that Bitcoin was down pretty hard over the weekend. So coin was going to open down, right? And the S&P was up on the Monday open, but the NASDAQ was still down uh, on that Monday open. So coin took another leg down because it's technology, right? Or, or like sometimes, you know, like coins up today, well, why is it up? Well, the market's ripping up too, right? And it's a part of probably ETFs and all this other stuff. So the same way that Tesla is kind of driving the spider, right? Like maybe coins in enough of these ETFs that it's going up with, uh, with the technology. Well, and I'll tell you, the barometer for Omicron or Omicron is actually, I was looking at, you know, you know, I can't really talk about this other thing that I'm involved in, but I was looking at the sports betting and gambling stocks. Some of these were really short and now they're getting, they're, they're like, so I look at, look at a couple that like skills, right? SKLZ. And then you have okay. the, the one called Lottery. You have Fubo, which actually isn't quite mainstream yet in sports betting and gambling, but they're going to have interactive kind of wagering. That's interactive, right? In the that's kind of cool. It's going to be really cool. I mean, I think that's the future. So I think when we talk about this, I talk about you know you sitting there watching a boring ass game. Like I was there. I went out with my friends last night and went to a really cool place in Marin for the, to watch the game. I have a friend who's a really big Bills fan, and I was like, "There's no way the Bills are going to beat the Patriots." And sure enough, they did not beat the Patriots because Belichick. He's like a war, he's like a warlord, you know, like he's an over overlord or something like where he can just he seemingly could just control the game last night. But my friend was sitting next to me and he's like, ah, I, I he goes, I felt he, he's older and he goes, I took a nap and I fell asleep and I forgot to bet. And and then he's like, well, I want to bet the over I want to bet the halftime. And he goes, well, I don't want to call my bookie or something like that, he said. And so I and but if you had it on your phone where you could do like an interactive quick bet and we're in California, so it's not legal to do sports betting legal here. But if he okay. he would he could have bet a field goal or he could have bet the over under total or any of those derivatives of the of the game, which is what's going to be happening, and people are going to do yeah. that. They're going to bet on field goals. You're going to have quick odds, you know. Dude, I tell you what, and you know, I'm not the biggest sports fan in the world. You know, I, I realize, you know, who I'm talking to and stuff like that. But the crazy thing about it is, like. A lot of people know more about their sports teams than they know about the stocks. And well, yet no, that's a, to that's take a positions thousand, in the stock market. Joe, that's a thousand percent. So having been both, uh, I had a fantasy sports company. I don't know if I told you that. Did I ever tell you that? Yeah, I, I think I was talking about it. Um, so uh, I, the we, joke, we and you made a great point, and the joke was, I remember one time I gave advice to Sid Randy Moss. I don't know if you know who he is, but, but you know, you probably do. He's a famous guy. Yeah, Randy Moss. Yeah, so Randy Moss was playing with Minnesota, and Deion Sanders was covering, was supposed to play and cover Randy Moss. And if he plays, he's going to shut down Randy Moss, because that's what Deion did. He shut down the best guy every week. Well, I I had yep. assumed, based on the reports, that Deion was going to play. Well, he didn't play. I told you know, guys to say, hey, maybe play him, but he's not going to have a great week. And this one guy sat him. And I never forget the email. This was on Thanksgiving. The guy told me I ruined his entire Thanksgiving. And I'll tell you, <laughs> like, you could, that's, that's, a, that's a much more intense letter than I'll get from a client who maybe where the S&P has a bad day or the triple Qs go down 2 or 3%. That's a, a worse letter I got from the fantasy sports fan than I would get right. as an investor sometimes. And it's just, it's just kind of interesting how people, and maybe it's a, but, where I think they know they, they think they know more and more about sports and investing is complicated. I mean, we you know, the language of investing, and I've talked about it on the show, they made it so complicated so they only could understand it. <laughs> That's what I always feel like because it was like when I studied for my exam, part of learning the is like almost learning a new language, like it's in Spanish or it's in you know Portuguese or something like that, right? No, I agree. It's like the terminology you know, uh, keeps a lot of people out of the market just because they don't understand what the vocabulary is. Well, and that's kind of what we're doing here is I, I consider this a portal for education for people. I love to talk about stocks in general. You do as well. Your expertise is definitely your options years because you had 20 years on the floor in the, in the mart. And so, you know, you have that experience. So I want to look so I was looking at, let's look at a couple we talked about in the past. So we talked about Amberella. So this one, yep. again, I, I always look at this one cause I, you know, I had the position, clients have the position. Today, to me, seems like a short squeeze. I think if you're in it now, this might be a time where it's getting to oversold, where you might want to, overbought, I should say, because it's, it's peaked up to around 80 today. And I would say, because I think there's a lot of short covering here, because you, you know, we talked about the short. So I'd say oscillator-wise, if you're in this, you know, just be careful, because I think this day like this is a day where tomorrow you get selling for no reason. 
I'm not saying it's not a great long. It's a great long. Being in semiconductor space, in the EV semiconductor space where these guys are, and the growth that they're having, phenomenal. I'm just saying, you know, this is for the next week. It'd be an investor here if you want to be. But if you're, if you're going to take some gains, you might want to take some gains here as it, you know, maybe get back in the position next year or something like that. But I think this probably is going to have some sideways to down now coming in. It so if it, it would go down, where do you think it could go and when? Um, I think this will go back to in between two two ten and two hundred somewhere around there. This because it shouldn't move. This thing had moved so much. This shouldn't be moving fifteen percent. It's shorted. It just it just can't move. Like I was, I'm looking at these numbers. So I'm looking at the you. Can, if you look in sectors, you can tell what sectors they're shorting. So they, there shouldn't be four percent moves in in like in certain stocks. Like you're getting four percent moves in all the shorted stocks that were like the cruise lines. And the airlines, you shouldn't be getting 4% moves in those. That, that doesn't make any sense. The only reason they could go 4% is they're being shorted. There's no new information on that. So I think what happened is we got Omicron. People got really, they they got hip to it. They wanted to start shorting positions. And they started shorting a bunch of stuff. We are, we're also seeing like a, and, and we're going to talk about this. So this is really interesting to me is this whole China stock thing. I dipped a toe in K-Web. And I did it for my clients too. And I thought, you know, that thing had retested 70%. But frick, I, uh, that's a nice way of saying it, frick, because I, yeah. I didn't, we didn't make money. I felt crappy being in it. Today I got out of it because it, it, had, it had a 4.57. It was something up like almost 5% today. But K-Web has gotten destroyed, but the rhetoric still sucks. You know, China, I think, in fears, I read a story, I read a story today where the Chinese government kind of said, hey, you know, they're open and they have respect where Chinese companies seek to list. And that's what the Chinese Regulatory Commission said in a statement. So I don't know. I mean, to me, why do you even have to say that? I mean, I, does that make you feel comfortable if they have to even say that? And what's going on? The rhetoric from China is bad every other day. And the U.S. rhetoric is going to get stronger, I feel, right? And it's ultimately the USA's decision who lists these companies here. Right. Yeah, so I took, I, 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 so I took to, to be yep. clear on what I did and positioning wise, I took the 5% bump today, which probably is somewhat short squeeze. And I got, we got out of, I exited the position just to be clear because I felt like that, you know, there's too much and there is a reality, you know, you know, the, the whole Chinese thing, like if, if they do listed, they could really kind of, and this is a story I pulled from, from Barron's, which is pretty good. So listen to this. This is from a, an expert here. It says, if a delisting is imminent, the stock price is going to plummet, and those who control the company can buy out public investors for a bargain, then go private and relist in Asia at a much higher valuation and make a shitload of money. Right? And what is China going to do? Nothing. They're going to put... Dude, they're going to take over Hong Kong, and they're going to list all these companies on the Hong Kong. You are right. listening to the right wage of the like, NFL edition like, with I the know, doctor. Know, and right, but just listen to this again. So let's say they delist a stock, and let's talk about stocks that people loved for years. Ali How are you doing, doctor? BABA, we already had right? some of those okay. uh, Thursday Alibaba years, so we got a sort of short like week this week in China. That's some interesting action. We had but look at what this is. Would the Chinese Lions communist government like the And the way I saw it, Lions and Yes, of course they would. And so when I started reading this, and then I figured you got the relief rally today, I'm like, I'm the FI. I, game, we lost some money. I think I lost, it ended up being a high scoring like, game. We lost a few percent. The Buffalo maybe New Orleans game where Buffalo walked you know, away pretty easy. But I was like, time to get out now. And we and were two and zero in this case. I think a pretty if good listing is in the right? weekly the wager in the NFL down. on Thursday, the Thanksgiving the company day special. Can buy back the shares. Games. What do you think of the Thursday games? They can't get rid of them. Then the company can take themselves private again. And then six months later, they can relist for a higher valuation. Hey, realizing Cal, there's no so factor the or anything the wrong with the company we talked about watching, except for the price that they how interesting, fact, they how good are they were government. At, at the point and then i had heard could, somebody you know, else that would be the american push, push. Is, that, is that what happened you got so two on and got a push i got a push they, they were right? they don't they represent came anything they start off really well and i was looking i bet that there's a bank that holds the adr kind of going in the direction that represents a stock sort of but you don't have rights like if you always did come out and play well right you know they were competitive and i don't even chicago we're still waiting for that announcement to see if Maggie gets, gets well, canned. American yeah, depository receipts. I mean, that's, that's, well. that's yeah. what the technical close the, in all their language Well, I think they There's even have come up with a new close term loss for them. So I ended up pushing now, there, but definitely hit on the Raiders the and the Bills. But, uh, Are you talking about the uh, overall day for like this idea of variable on, on interest Thursday. entities? And some nice yes, turkey. I hope you had some turkey yourself. Let's talk about the games we're going to cover this week. Well, that's what they just want to have it more clear. Did we get any? And we're going to talk about, did you learn anything on the mirror game? 
and I'm going to bring it up. We can bring it up later the, when we get to it. You just see it. the stock. But we're going to talk about making the assumption. Yeah. Tennessee, New England. And so they want to talk about Pittsburgh, uh, Cincinnati. Uh, that the Tampa USA Bay people Indy, are misreading Minnesota, and San Francisco, LA Rams, really and Green is. Bay. Very interesting to myself. Right. So, like, so injury, here's an injury things we yeah, can talk go about on. in that game. Sorry, you, Cleveland and yeah, Baltimore, so and that's, that's so the last I, one we're going to cover. But what are you thinking? What are you thinking this first and game, this, this New England team, which opinions. is now being called right? – so <laughs> well, that's, that's, team that's good in this industry, <laughs> In the Joe. AFC right well, now, this New England team. Well, it kind of hurts me a little. I'm too uh, They're favored by – Oh, you know what? That's honestly – that's a good point because I've yeah, been, t- you know, l- let me give you one example obviously. and I'll let yeah, you go on this because you're going to, you're going to set up a trade for I've gone about right? handicapping uh, yeah, we'll this about week. It, it was a little bit on okay, how so I looked at the Okay, so same thing is true with Dallas interest rates. Game, and again, you know, we're getting, now we got the reset in interest, interest rates. Stories, I always talk we, about the TBS being a good play betting against interest rates And I heard it even again Thursday is that the Raiders should quit. And I think the resistance is right around 1.7. But now we're up, we had a big move. I think we had like a 14 basis point move in two days. This is why I put a money line bet in on the Raiders. As I was watching two teams in the morning play now combined do not have five wins in the, in the right the direction because right. Omicron right. fears are going down. And right. the, we're still having these talks about inflation. That the Raiders have quit. And I said, there's just no way that a 5 5 team in the NFL has quit. Right? So, so I feel like I was early on that. You know, I got in that. We've been in it since like April. And wrote it up to like 1.74. But then seen um, and then, it you know, Tennessee again. is missing and some people pieces. People talk about the tenure so all the time. We got to see them on CNBC. They're the, the same thing. The, tenure has to go up because the tenure traditionally is three percent. What I'm looking at is the for spread. Years. Yeah. Well, I think and let's, and so let's we're talk waiting. about a couple so of these this injuries. Is one yeah, the injuries are playing investor. a big factor yeah, in the NFL. Yeah, maybe we were early. On like offense, if you ever saw the movie, we saw the big show. You know, obviously, no, you didn't see it. Henry, you tell me you didn't see it. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not the big movie guy. Okay, like so the big short was like, AJ Brown is questionable. Yeah, maybe I was early. Julio Jones, who really has done nothing this year. Like, he got there on the year He's on IR already. And then really had to pay all the carrying fees for all those shorts. He was losing his butt paying for the shorts. Maybe he got there early. We have New England. But in the end, he was right. And that was the kind of the end punchline running movie. back so let's you talk know, about Hunter that Henry i talked about the tbs problems, which is a way to Smith. play against rising and then a couple rates, injuries on defense short but long-term. newly going to this much healthier uh, long-term bond so what do you think in spread and now you want to talk about maybe a long-term player and hey, i'm a firm believer that they're the aware of all that different information when well, they send like this in, line like, out like, so start taking money on the game probably work for any and we see it we see a game that opened at two and a half on these kind of companies is now all the way up to seven with balanced money this might and happen, right? Like bad news could be starting end, to right? adjust. Right, like how long term out um, there? And, and the would you be so? Would this be England, more though? When you think about it, look what's happening. You know, this is a tough game because you know, the one if we had K-Rubs opportunity of betting this game, it was at three. We missed and the, chart the three. Is we missed the four. We missed the six. Highs, now we're playing at seven. I really like New England. That's the that's the inverse we want. Any type of discipline whatsoever. This thing is now that we're at seven in this game. It's pretty clear. It's got to be a no play for me. It's like the even though you talked about it and you talked about it yesterday on the and so we did on Wednesday. You talked about the Raiders. It'd be safer. We talk about the setup. Much more of a value. Okay, so here, so K Web. I don't even really know what K Web is. K Web is the it's the high tech Chinese ADR. And so that was the high tech. Well, no, this is not. This is and I think again, trust this goes into China what we talked about before. Where there's a discipline to this, right? Okay. So it's uh, got a bunch of these so, uh, companies in know, it. I yes. I would probably want it. I wouldn't want to do this necessarily. A, a in a strong ETF play that I would believe lots of companies in there. They're kind of targeting one is company. Bill but does if we not were to do something like this, and uh, okay. Which means K-Web. we have to do one of two what, things. What, Either we have to get involved do, in a teaser like the put, or some sort of parlay on the money line. Or we have to lay a tremendous amount of wood and then I could buy, to get a $100 return. Uh, and I'm not in the mood to do either one of those because I don't want to play around with, like it, with a teaser this week. So I just kind of lay it out that way so that so that's folks, it, it doesn't deter somebody from playing a strong so team in New England at home. Is about where I think, you know, they got offense, right? they can run the ball, they're well so coached, they're at home. Uh, and it's a touchdown or less. I would sell the six one and a half. for the play. Uh, there's New England. Two dollars and yeah, they've been rolling. They've been hot. Let's go over. So, so you're, that's 40. a tough game. So is what I would, you're saying, cost me about that's not going to be in your A, B, or C right? for this week. Is what the you're saying. beauty of this trade. So let's go. Let's go to we go down Let's look at. Uh, might as well talk bit, about. We talked about Belichick. Let's talk about his old quarterback. But if we have Tampa Bay at Indianapolis. Right, I've got an extra six and five. Foot. Tampa Bay seven and three. Right. So a little bit better, but it was the Giants into, last week. Not really sure higher, there. I don't uh, lose you know, home dogs here box, with Indy plus right? three Between 40 and against 36, Tampa Bay. What are you saying here? Spread. And then my break even well, in, is in, in, 32 and lower. Well, Indianapolis is obviously a decent football I'm team. Make, I've got uh, an they're extra playing well. They're 32. balanced. Same so thing. This is one of those stocks. And these teams that we're looking at dollars, that are successful, they can stop the run, but they can also run the ball and they're balanced. 
and so and now we've got two teams matching up against each other. The, it feels as if Indianapolis is a good play, but they're coming off of such a high-scoring game at Buffalo. Like a massive and move where you, you know, can't They're buy playing puts. against Tom Brady, who I don't like to go against. Well, long and extra put. Yeah, this is a difficult game gives here. gives you a little bit of risk, you're getting three, right? Um, at 36. I'm looking at Tampa Bay's injury-wise. Tampa Bay has some injuries to some of these key players. I mean, there's Mike Evans questionable. Does that help or does that screw it up for you? A couple starters No, no, I think that's an interesting way to play it for sure. Uh, Pierre Paul, so ideally Devin White, you would just buy a put, right? So you do but have some questions so on you know health for them. Indianapolis looks like a much healthier team now getting back. Uh, T.Y. Hilton into the, into the fold, um, one much healthier going into this game. So, you're, what, you're, so what's a, is this one might might to avoid too, way uh, Uncle B? Or what are you thinking to here? Think about it, and and then the other thing you have to think about is what happens against somebody like Tom Brady, right? Right, because he's one of those guys like the worst case scenario in this example. Aaron Rodgers, who if he gets the ball at the end of the game, I do have an extra option. He's going to have a chance in a close spread like that. So I volatility him. Is that what you're saying? Going I think up so. If we're dropping, and, and right? I also, and I, so that I, I like what Indianapolis has done, but I, losses, I'm leery of teams that uh, that blow out six, against right? the spread and the following week. Flushing, but I will take Indianapolis will pay for plus the, the, the three points at home. Spread. I think they're a good enough trade. team to win outright. I think that's a good and trade. I'm getting if three you, points if your at home, belief is so that'll be that one of the plays are going to go and maybe potentially. So what do you think about the uh, Pittsburgh Cincinnati Bengals matchup? Very, very here. good. This is kind of an interesting space. Uh, I, I mean, I looked at it here when I entered the, the position, four Joe, and I thought this against the six is over Bengals, but it's not getting any better. Three and a half point home favorites. The conversation. Yeah, I mean, these teams are really dominant. What's the good news that's going to come from China next two and five against spread with Steelers? I saw one thing like war in terms of injuries. You know, Pittsburgh looks relatively Chinese healthy but like taiwan the Bengals here like relatively china healthy as wants well. taiwan so not as much of a factor russia there. wants a, ukraine one of those games and who's going to stand in their way pretty close regardless of how good you know either and, team and is on any given taiwan Sunday. and hong kong are yeah i like this game i like china's radar up. and i bet and we're hong still kong getting more than are looking for allies and friends right now i think uh when you have this perception is more than cincinnati right they're not better than pittsburgh they're trying to read what they're going to try to do like a sort of what i guess the u.s did I, I see well coached teams to as we get down into November, or restructure. December, I don't know what they're going to do, but they can't pay the you know, stock, That stock is. I think you also it's, notice as you, know, it's you an open, dive into the numbers. OTC, we have some it's interesting RNF, some interesting statistics on Roethlisberger. Now you know the you interesting know, thing about China and how they move uh, their rates. Ohio. So in the U.S., look at how he's done when he plays. Like a in the state of Ohio, is right. a tremendous the interest, record right? You know what China up, does? He also has a what, tremendous what record they against the spread. I think he they has a good record against the spread uh, maybe once or twice uh, out of nine or ten games on that. They move the so he's like heading back for some home like cooking we, is what you're US, telling me. In the U.S., we have a fractional bank. He likes system, it, right? and he's right. going to so get more than three points here. We've got a defense. We've got a good head coach. Uh, we got a veteran like quarterback five, in a divisional right? game. Oh, so they had, yeah, they changed. Like I did see this week. Well, we'll they they, they changed their reserves. The, Uncle B's the reserve uh, requirement. Yeah, they changed the reserve we'll requirement. Right? A little bit later in the and, show. And what are you thinking about the Minnesota Dennis and San Francisco game? So Minnesota said, actually, you know, that was like taking pretty interesting came through strong against Green Bay. Offense looked excellent. Both of these teams are relatively healthy. China have changed pretty much the full core, and a little bit dinged up like uh, 49ers at the one running back position, one, but most like, of their guys are healthy massive, on both sides of the right? ball here in mm -hmm. this game. Versus what are you seeing here? The, uh, well, Minnesota's got a brutal schedule. Like the so, like, and, and but China, China they lowered, they lowered it. They lowered it by, uh, by changing it and dropping um, it. Right but now. they've they've had two pretty much must yeah, win so situations. The economy, if you look right? at their right, they're, they're allowing banks and to then I also money, see a team in San Francisco that yes. needed to get healthy. And the bank you know, missing a couple of things. And let's, and let's, and let's kind of explain we that. So there's a reserve here. requirement for banks. Um, I like think the, we're like catching that overnight San Francisco on the kind of upswing, stuff that the Fed something does, similar where you to have what to we've seen with New England, but New England's amounts, a couple of games a more down the road on that. Met. And then and at one point, I, I really we, avoid I don't know teams if the reserve that are coming out of a divisional matchup we zero where, they, during COVID. where they won as an underdog and then at home. I think so that, that was a they, big they time win for Minnesota. It's important division. They've won two big games. They go back out on the road to the West Coast. And they're playing the San Fran team. That seems to be putting things together. And they will run it. You just created money out of that against the Rams. They will run it right down your throat and play physical. The money so seems to be on Minnesota, America, right? If they so I like Sam Fran at home here to cover that number. You know, that now that uh, Jimmy G is healthy, right? So they just got to the, loan the out. Team looks pretty good. A, they have a, a lot of ton more money, again. right? If looking, you went like last the way games, a bank makes money is if they have a million dollars, they've had some near misses where the record could be a little bit better.
if it's got Let's a 10, head next to it's another got a 10% division game, requirement. They can loan out 10 times the amount of money they have. Another kind of uh, tough right, to clock potential customers. game, Cleveland if they, if they lower Last week, we had the late news on Lamar Jackson. Now they can they just uh, double the amount of money that they can loan out. And that definitely could right? you know, that's cause how much a they have line to hold and reserve. Quickly. But we have Cleveland, so now, who has they can make always twice as many loans, right now is Mayfield. And as long as they're making good loans, they're going to get but seems you know, to be playing a lot through more it. interest. You know, they have as much interest they, coming in. This is, you know? this is kind so of a similar I, I comment that we made about the Raiters, it, right? It, it looked as well. if maybe the Raiders but just needed to maybe, play I'm in the way game and get, you know, and get my, out my, of it. You know, one of my, you know, of you know, I, yeah, I got these stories about right? Evergrande, and somebody um, sent me them. I love, I love angles on divisional matchups. You know, I brought one up there with the, People don't realize, you know, even with China, okay, you know, China's another one the second largest holder of the U.S. Treasury. We have a divisional form. team that's been getting beat. Oh yeah, I mean they by, hold they hold uh, billions big brother in, here. in U.S. Treasuries. Right? And so it's like the Japan's USA, number, China, Japan, China, Bank of Japan, Japan. Japan. yeah, yeah uh, spot, Bank of Japan on the road, and then UK. I mean, we own by the public, something like I don't know, it's twenty percent of the twenty five percent of the GDP or some crazy number that we own of our own bonds. I don't want to see, but you know, China, if they ever wanted to just blow up our interest rates, would just start selling everything. But it'll be deemed. Uh, yeah, but they're also natural so loans, right? get a because point the only people that buy their crap is us. So right. unless the they the have day, Baltimore another place down to sell to their back to, they're so just going to get long U.S. dollars no matter what, right? That's for sure. And, and we hey, look did you, back on their Have you been watching uh, how many games anything been going on in PayPal? You know, that thing is not, that thing is still dying. I really thought we were, that isn't super competitive and super It got sort of a move today, but it doesn't want to go anywhere. Yes, they are, and they need him to do it. Yeah, Every it's on the payment no right. man list. Absolutely, and, uh, it's he's carrying. He's awesome like Superman calls. for that like they, team. They've never traded it, and since it's I've been darn there. near every other. Oh, game. it's not being traded. So, you know, like you that, see seventeen, nineteen. I mean, yeah, in no, the next really twenty-three, and I don't and know you see if a twenty-five, that's, uh, thirty-one, uh, then thirty-four, six. Then you see a thirty-four, thirty-one, then ten to twenty-two, then sixteen to thirteen. Oh no, they played a lot of close games for sure. I would, and then you know, Cleveland can run the football, and they like to play whatever that is. We well, that's a Z scaler is a security firm. I think the PayPal thing is more. Um, do you use, do you use online like, the, transfer bank transfer in the network news right now? Uh, and, you know, uh, I'm, I'm kind of similar to the Raiders in that bank, spot. So right? They weren't email, painted real, but, uh, real pretty in, use, the, like, in in yeah, I, I mean, Thursday's pre games and and when they're talking like, about them being done. I think we're going to get the same story uh, in Chicago. So you look for a group of men to well, show up. So now, and, I, and this is really game to me where they what know happened with PayPal well, is I think get ready for a fist fight. they kind of got usurped. And so, you know, one of the companies hey, most that's of the really money on this game right now is trending towards Baltimore, by the so way. So Zell, now Zell is, Zell did the Cleveland. genius thing. And this is kind of, we can talk about this. Absolutely. That's exactly what we want. Yeah, so Zell one we're going to cover. They did. They went right to the bank. my team, and they with were like, the "Why are we having like Rams at Green Bay?" And I don't know. I haven't seen this in a long time. So now Green Bay they've integrated one point at home. Zelda is, is integrated, and in they are app against the spread. They're four and so. Like, if you go to First Republic, like everybody has general. So Zelda is going to take over. Um, this would be. You know, there's going to be a little bit I'm of a telling, washout. They're nine and two against these companies. This is this has been a team. Some of these covering where you have Rams team, like everyone's like, "Hey, do you have Venmo?" Spread seven and three. Probably don't have Venmo. Last ten seven and three against spread. So right or four and six against. Yeah, I do. I do. I just don't use it that much. I'm probably. Because of like, the Rogers, which I was is early not a COVID to toe, he's not even listed as a designation on the injury report. Though we know he's got some a toe thing. Yeah. So, well, uh, so we also the have way Aaron that this Jones potentially is, coming is owned by and you see that the company Dylan called may great, but I think the strength of that kind of running like game is when they have the versatility of, both of like the largest banks, the speed Bank of, of America, Jones, BB and T, which is truest capital. That's a pretty damn good backfield. Probably one of the best U.S. Bank in Wells Fargo. And then you have so the what Rams. Happened is they've kind of, of like, offensively where they're going. Like just moved in. Not look great. I think this, the move on PayPal is just they're like up, they're down. Who's going to use you? I think that at the beginning of the season, if you took yeah. the first four or because five weeks, they essentially yeah, have the Rams as one of the Super Bowl favorites. The right word, but they've come in and they've kind of cut off the need to even use. So what are you seeing in this game? Need to use these other because I I have my own because now they have this direct integration. I use certainly going to be a great game. I use Zell because it's integrated with my Pacific coasters. So I don't even have a great game. This big game for right, so you don't even have another layer. There's a lot of things around there. Of shit to worry uh, about. You know, a half a game. And with yeah. banking, Arizona, that's the fear, right? So, oh, I have to win. set up a new account. Now I have so to what do you see here? Other accounts game. of this account? Yeah, like, I get the, the same what feeling on this I don't, game people as I don't want to do it's, it, and then that's kind of talking about the big one, one right? direction, like, and I never yeah, liked that. That's Coinbase, exactly so right. Who, who can be disrupted? Ultimately, can what you're telling me I mean, when they drop well, this number? Why do I want another portfolio? There's why do I want another place to get check stuff? I don't. Aaron Rogers I want, a, I want one place. I want an aggregate. And I find that really hard to believe. You know, I don't want to have to trade. into a dilemma. Coin here. Anytime I find myself in a situation where I don't want to believe a number, I want to be able to trade. That's when we need to pause, take a step back, and say, okay, what's going on here? So that's on the same device. 
think device you just said, I get dead on. I cannot disagree whatsoever. Whatever, you know, right? Like, so why I want to use my phone for everything? Is someone telling me? Yeah, totally. That so Rogers has a so anyway, so that's what I see with PayPal. Is I think PayPal and on top knows of that, that they're the maybe not going to. They're not seeing the, the transactions they used to see because I think people are using Zelle. And I'm, yeah, I'm and one you know, of those. Let's, let's remember this PayPal is in LA transactions. So here, here, just let me set up some things because we talked about how PayPal is going to do the integration with December. So you got to talk about Venmo and Amazon, and I think this is an LA team, and we talked about that the last couple of weeks. More of these groups kind of pros are a little together. Kids are stay different. Stay relevant. Because you if these LA banks, these seven banks outside, you know, 75, 80 degree essentially said, hey, we don't really need PayPal or Venmo or any of these other pay services. It's going to be 30, 40 I think, I think that's a you know how things shot. can change. I think that they're feeling any it. place in the Midwest. I lived in the Midwest yeah. for years. So, so, you, I mean, they were behind on the Bitcoin, dime. so I think they're, they're And we might get some snow. Well, you've seen this over the years, too, Joe. And all I can tell you is when opposing teams go in there, there's somebody who there's somebody who probably knows. And the opposing teams can sometimes be stifled. I remember a game that I go back like 30 right. years ago and there's some Sanders people that are allowed the, uh, to trade early Green Bay Packers too, in a playoff like game and Sanders like, rushed for like you know, negative six rushing they, they yards because I don't know if they iced the field but it sure seemed like it so yeah, I think that's there's some advantages show. here that's that another show yeah no, no absolutely I wasn't trying to I was throwing a bomb out there no but that but to me that's probably I think one of the best to one of my friends who's been in fintech for pretty much his whole career Uncle B what are you thinking you think the pick is in on the Packers coming in to you know to and it's funny that they call it early morning services that's a funny name for I can't company that's can everything kind of that take you over said, and, and hey, based the on the story that we, the you. picture that we about, just made, no, wait. yeah, go on. The way you explain that, I like the way you explain that. At least a field goal or more, and they're not. I would think. I would think if there were, if there was, yeah, well, I think that's what you look for. The Rogers injury again. Rogers poking fun of the media. They made, they said some, you know, and if you get someone who's going to disrupt it, so change the way something's done, and it's going to get rid of something that some people get during COVID. Historically, just had a sprained foot. I guess. You can look. I have a sprain, and I want to tell you this from personal experience. I have a sprained toe. From playing tennis, by I have not fixed it. Or, uh, I think he can play with it. I don't. I mean, no need for it. Right? They can do a lot of different things with shoes. Yeah. I don't so think maybe, I mean, one day. I mean, a lot of these we'll companies. Some, Sunday, if you look at companies that were in the pick in, in for the me, I'm, I'm certainly on the Packers you know, on this one. Uh, and probably had 20 years ago. There's probably a right, like, big handful that I'm out there. I'm not talking about like Jimmy and Sharon and Exxon and all of these other companies. But there certainly are technology companies. So hey, let's break this down. Let's focus on the weekly wager. We kind of set these up or something in order of the plays. ABC, Uncle B, you ready? Uh, so that's yeah. the cycle wager. of life, if you will. Right. What are you thinking here? Right. So anyway, hey, one more, one last right, thing. So Let's talk about one last thing. And, and I think, again, go. I'd like to talk about let's something, that, how I'm people gonna, can I'm protect themselves gears. if you can't I'll go really the other way. So they start I, moving. I, we are I just have to trust Bill TBF. Belichick at home. But the DBC, again, this game, is boring old. This line is telling me that shark money, this isn't public money that's moved this thing this much. So I'm going to go with the smart money that's moved this thing. I would try and search for six and a half or six, get this thing below seven, but... C play because of the right? spread. When does that ever happen? Actually, see, I would like to like to go I mean, and Patriots see and try to hunt freak, down that spread. You know, with, if you're in one of those states with the online the legalized DBC, gambling, we're in the commodity DraftKings or one of the like other the basket of commodities. Definitely have can find that available. Yeah, ever outpace the index? Uh, and you ever, see, if yeah. you look at lines nowadays, you'll so see this thing is up forty three percent now. Services. Yellen comes on. She's worried about supply chain. So you have the ability in the old days. That's her concern. Guy, you go to Yellen. Janet Yellen was like a friend of mine. So New England stock market. New England's the first pick. A C game for Uncle B. Of reason. What do you yeah, think? And she was not. Why don't we she was do not, this? When they why don't we put her, New she's England not very good. I felt with I Indianapolis felt like and she, flip a coin. You can take either one of those um, two she teams. Did, she must have said home. um like forty times. Which would you, has in like would a, you like put a equal like equal units on those kind but of? But she's been games. a friend to investors yeah, they're for both sure. Two good teams. She's always at home. One of them are getting a field goal. The other one we're expecting to win. So. Or you know, if you want to be safe, supported, those are two you know, good uh, home stock teams. Market in, in time. Yeah, she's well a dog, coach, definitely, right? I think, yeah. I think she's a good And she, I, you know, personally, good, I think she's very good. Those are good wagers, That's so to speak. Not, but, not, not only is she you know, helicopter bend, but she's a little bit of a scale here. But when she starts talking about, you know, let's the, take, the uh, supply chain. As our B game, let's take the Cleveland Browns. We got rid of our term. Cleveland Browns plus the points. We're not going to bring that up, although we just brought it up. But she's been talking Browns about it. She's been talking about it. What you see is some labor chain shortages. Here, and I'll tell you, you should take a couple Jackson. years to resolve. Has to be Superman for that. But she did say there's no evidence a of a wage price spiral. And this was a thing we talked about last week. And I, I have this argument. Do you have any other beginnings? We're going to go right to the A plays. Are going up. No, so much. I would line up. Do you? The same thing I just think people are getting screwed because their paychecks are worth the same. Same type of idea. 
of yeah, what we're and playing. There's no here. way wages we're playing are playing situational we system type plays. Country, like um, so those are two had, good Ds no where you got Cleveland out. and right. Pittsburgh. And I think Cleveland I think when my friend talks to me, he's spot. in his little bubble. And you know, what he has you have for your A's. He has a good he's a good barometer in the process of elimination. But this is a why don't we why don't we do this? And I think people at some point when you, when you have same, high housing, same breath, right, we're gonna, that means we're gonna you only get a certain weasel, amount of people who actually can live in that And hope he doesn't let us down. I'm telling you. So we and got two too, And I always used well. to think about this. And I think about like, if you live in a really I like it. You heard it. Uncle B's picks are in. Yep. Um, and I'll tell you, I say you like live that in pick, one of the most that's expensive gonna be, That's a conviction pick for me. I don't know. Is the Green Bay one. I also like the San Francisco pick. I'm sure it's worth LeBron James list. Especially taking into account what we said about Minnesota having a very tough division win. I'm sure for a little bit of a letdown. So San Francisco playing well. You know, on Thanksgiving week, Focus there's the workers still, you get for your house, uh, real nice whether they're contractors or and I think that's people a good who are just San fixing You heard it. Those are the picks for the week in the NFL. They're probably charging more than someone Doctor who lives in a less B, expensive area. The weekly wager. Hey, if you're listening or yeah. watching on yeah. YouTube, I mean, please hit the subscribe absolutely. button. Like we'll see you again can. next time. If you if you have a if you had a yacht, but even if you had a boat, <laughs> if you had a boat, yeah, if you have a boat, it's a, that's it. Yeah, it's like it's just like if there's some services that are luxury items. Well, and I was thinking about this, and this is one time. Like, so I had a. Um, everybody has this problem at some point in the house if they own you know, an old home. And I had, you know, all the sewer drains, at least in California, were all made of clay. They always crack, and they get yep. root infestation, whatever. And so yep. it's an expensive thing because you got to dig it up. The permits are really expensive. It's like a fifteen thousand dollar fix. Oh so, yeah. Right. And so I called a bunch of people that I knew that were plumbers in the area. And they were all like, ah, you need the drain fix, you need this. One guy tried to root it, you know, go in there, and he and it took him, yeah. like, hours. He couldn't do it. So I actually called the, the biggest, the cheapest thing, because I didn't believe that they were pricing me based on where I lived, was okay. ro- Roto-Rooter. So no kidding, yeah. for the same thing that somebody said, hey, I have to replace it and put in 15 k worth of new pipe, Roto-Rooter fixed, which was just fine for $300. I'm not kidding. Roto-Rooter has this thing yeah. with, like, a blade on it that cuts through as it goes through. So it, he literally brought out, the guy was so funny. He brought it out. It looked like a, a wig. There was so much like root, <laughs> root system in the, in the pipe. But the point was, is that I, I'm talking about like when people live. So if you live somewhere where it's expensive to live, the, then your wages probably will have to go up because people won't be able to work for those companies that are in those areas unless they can afford housing. Yeah. Cause that, that maybe was too yeah. complicated, but yeah, no, I mean, and it's like, you can, like there can be lots of factors going into the solution. Right. So it's just like, you know, there's going to be, there's people who don't want to work and their blue collar jobs have just been destroyed. You know, like Mike Rowe does that big, you know, thing about getting blue collar. In my area, I had two skylights done recently and the people that were doing the work, I don't think were legal. You know what I mean? But I don't think the guys could, could hire Americans to do the work. Yeah, they're probably not available right now. But I, and I would say, so just to clear up on this, and I, I was trying to say as a hedge against inflation, this DBC still is still an interesting play. And now having it retraced a little bit, retraced down from like the highs of like 21 per share down to like 19, had a little correction. This thing's back up in an upward direction. And we're starting to talk about inflation. This thing will rise with the interest rates. So, oh, yeah, because... Com- like the definition of a commodity is just limited amount, right? Absolutely. So you're going to see this directly rise in a positive correlation with interest rates. So I think, you know, if you want to play, another way to play inflation is simply, you know, what? It, so if you're fixed income, you should be in commodities. You really should because you're not going to get it in bonds, but you can get it in commodities. So if things are, it's like a hedge for you, right? Yeah. So if it goes up, your, your cost of living goes up, the commodities index will essentially go up as, as well. But we'll hey, Joe. Great show as always. Appreciate your insight. I appreciate the 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 China thing. It's pretty interesting. And That's are you? Cool. What, I hope it, yeah. Yep. No, you first. What are you looking at now? Is there anything you guys are looking at in awesome calls in the next week ahead? You know, I don't think we're we're just not looking out weeks ahead. But like every morning, it's usually ten to fifteen things, and they're picking it by the. I'm just the the lowdown is they look for the the biggest ranges of overnight moves and they try to find out why the stock is moving, and so the guy teaches it kind of to be an analyst and look out at a couple sources to find out why the stock's moving that way. Yeah, it's really interesting. It's always great to get the insight of what you guys are doing over there. Thanks again for being on the show. Awesome. Hope you do some sous vide cooking pretty soon. <laughs> right. 
Yeah. And hey, you if you're listening, you got a turkey breast waiting. You got a turkey breast. You still haven't had that? That's getting old, Joe. Is that in the yeah. freezer? It's in the freezer. I'm safe. Okay, good. You got to be safe with it. All right. Hey, if you're listening on YouTube or watching on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button and we'll see you again next time on Stock Smart.